All right, so in the last video, we got our NAEP data loaded in with Python. Now we're going to start working with it to create some segments, which are those objects instead of pixels that we can then classify. So let's add some imports here. We can get rid of import scipy. We can come down and we want to do from sk image import exposure. And you'll notice it says that I don't have ex access to exposure. I'm going to go over to my anaconda prompt. You can see I've done it here. We can give this a test. We can type Python and we can do from sk image import exposure. And we'll see if that doesn't throw an error, then we should be good and no error was thrown, so we should be good. And we'll do the same thing for our next one from sk image dot segmentation import quick shift. And so we'll import that. And those both worked for us, so we should be good to go. Um, I don't know if my packages have not been indexed or something. So go from sk image dot segmentation import quick shift. And we don't want this underscore quick shift underscore cy, we just want quick shift. And quick shift is the method we'll use to create these objects. Um, I'm just going to pull this up here. This is the sidekit image documentation, and it shows you these four different methods they have. We're going to use quick shift just because I've used it before. Um, depending on your application, one of these other ones might be better. Um, but as you can see, there are different options for that. All right, so back over to our script here. So one thing we need to do here is we need to rescale our band data so it's value zero to one. Um, normally the way you do this with remotely sensed data is to convert it uh, to reflectance. We're not gonna do that here um, because I'm trying to give you an idea of how you can do the, the classification part. And we're not gonna go through reflectance calculations. Um, we're just gonna do kind of a quick method here. So we're gonna create a new image. And this is where we're going to do exposure. And it's going to be rescale underscore intensity. And then we're going to input our band data there. And so this will give us an image where the values are now between 0 and 1. Um, so they're normalized. That's what the rescale intensity is for. And we'll do it with band data. All right. So we are set to go. Oh, my mistake, we're set to go there now. Okay, so now we're going to create our segments. And our segments, we're going to use quick shift to do that. And we're going to input IMG. And then I'm going to go over to the documentation for quick shift here so we can look at the parameters we can specify. So this is once again the sidekit image documentation. You can see we have the image we put in which we've done here. We have this ratio which balances the color space. Higher values give more weight to color space. We have the kernel size. A bigger value means fewer clusters. We have the mixed maximum distance. Um, a higher value means fewer clusters. And as you can see, these are all optional. We can set them to defaults, which that's maybe what we'll just do here is leave the defaults. Um, and this says convert to lab, um, which says whether the input should be converted to LAB color space prior to segmentation. And it says the input is assumed to be RGB. Now notice that our, uh, our NAEP image has an extra band that is the near infrared. So we want to make sure this is set to false because our input is not RGB. So let's go back over here. And uh, let's do convert to lab. Let me just make sure I have that right. Nope, lab is lowercase. Convert to lab equals false. Okay, so we can go ahead and we'll run the segments. Now, I want you to note that when we run the segments, it's going to take um, a little bit of time. And so what I'll do is I'll put... 
Let's actually come up here and import time. And so we'll just time this. And then we'll print segments complete. And then we'll do uh, time dot time minus seg start. So that'll tell us how long it took so we know how long that takes. Okay. Now, once we have those segments, we want to save them to a raster so we can then view them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that next. And so the way we do this is we'll make a segments data set and we'll use our driver TIFF to do it and we'll do create. And here we'll need to put in the information to create a raster. We'll need to specify a file name and let's actually do this up here. We'll call, we'll do segments, oops, excuse me, segments. Uh, fn equals c temp nape segments.tiff. So we'll specify the file name here. Segments fn. We need to specify the raster x size, which will be the same size as our nape data sets. So we can do nape underscore ds dot raster x size. We need to specify a raster y size, which will be nape ds dot raster y size. I'm going to hit enter here. Let's uh, first do a comma and then enter. Okay. Now we need the um, number of bands, which is one, and the data type. And just to be safe, we'll do gdel.gdt, and we'll do float32. Um, these will probably come out as integers though, but we'll do float32 so we have to make sure we have enough space and in case the format is different, we won't have any problems there. All right, and so now we're gonna have to assign a geo transform. So we can do segments ds dot set geo transform. And that's going to be nape ds dot get geo transform. This should probably be a capital S. Okay. And we need to do uh, segments ds dot set projection. And that'll be nate underscore ds dot get projection. So we'll have the same geo transform, the same projection as our nate data set. Okay, and this should actually be, I think, a projection reference, so my apologies for the mistake there. And then we uh, need to write the data to the raster band. So we do segments ds dot get raster band one dot write array, and then here is where we're going to write segments to the raster okay and then we need to do segments ds and then we sorry we just need to close segments ds so that everything saves properly and the way we can do that is just do segments ds equals none and we should have a raster saved Okay, so I'm just going to put a little space around this so we can see the different parts of our script here. So what we're doing, let's just go through it because part of this is from our last tutorial. We are running, um, we're opening our nape image. With This is the file name. We're setting a driver. We're opening our nape data set. This is the nape image. We're getting the number of bands. We're creating an empty list of our band data. We're printing out the number of bands, rows, and columns to show our raster size. For each band in our band's data in our raster, we are looping through and we're adding that band data to our list. 
Then we're stacking those together in a NumP array. We're rescaling those so the values are between 0 and 1. We're getting a start time. I'll put this up here. Well, what just happened? Sorry, my fault there. We're getting a start time so we know when our segmentation algorithm started running. And then we're calculating, um, we're, we're determining the segments. And so let's uh, just make a note, do segmentation here, and then save segments to raster. So once we have those segments, we're going to print out how long it took to do the calculation. Then we're going to create a GDAL raster to save the segments to. Uh, we're going to set the geo transform of that. So this is setting the location, setting the projection of that location, and then writing the data to the raster band, and then closing our raster. Okay. So I'm going to click run, and when I click run, this will probably take a little while to go, and so I will pause the video and just let you know if I have any errors. And if I don't, we'll open it up and I'll show you what the final output looked like. And then we can open QGIS and load our segments in. So I'm going to go ahead and click run on my OBIA script and hopefully this works. Okay, so we're running and I'll pause the video now. Okay, we've got to fix something here. So it couldn't find SK image. And I, okay guys, so I forgot the error. I uh, came over to my Anaconda prompt and I made sure I typed conda deactivate. And that deactivated my current environment, so I don't have, you'll notice up here that I had base to the left. Now I don't have anything. And once I did that, I restarted PyCharm, and we're going to try to run this again to make sure it works. So I'm going to click the Run button, and the we should have a load this time. Okay, good deal. So that's normal. Um, that's just GDAL saying it wasn't installed with uh, some drivers but we have the drivers we need. And so we print it out here. We print it out this print statement, the number of bands, number of rows, number of columns. And now we are running probably, we're probably at this point where we're running the segmentation. So I'm gonna stop the video here and I'll pick it up once we finish running. All right, so we finished running, but unfortunately we have an error and if you'll notice, it's in line 31, set geo. This should be transform, not transform. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that, add an S in. And if we can take a look here, I missed the C in projection as well. Not good spell checking by me. Um, so that means our raster is not going to be written. You'll notice here our segments were completed in... 1234 seconds um, so that's about 20 minutes um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this again sorry about those errors and I will put this code up on my website go to opensourceoptions.com and I'll try to remember to include a link in the description and if I don't um, leave me a comment and remind me um, so let's go ahead and run this again and see if we can get this to work properly this time. And I'll come back to you when this is finished running. Okay. Run's taking a second to start here. But I think it's going to go in just a sec. Okay, there it goes. So I'll stop this and get back to you when the run is finished. Okay, so our run has successfully finished. Um, this means that our segments TIFF raster should be created. And so I'm going to go open that up in QGIS, and I'll bring you back in when I have that raster loaded, and we can take a look at what it looks like. Information. Okay, you can see we just have this gray raster, and it goes from 0 to 53517. So let's just kind of zoom in here. And what we'll do, 
actually is we'll re-symbolize this so it has unique values if we can do that here. So let's do palleted unique values and let's click classify and this is going to take a minute because they're 53,500 and we're going to click OK. And so now you can see that we have these different sections of our image that are all different colors. Now you can see those segments we've created. So let's go add in our nape image real quick, which is going to be this one here. And let's drag it down to the bottom. And let's make these segments somewhat transparent here. Um, maybe like that. Let's see. Okay, that'll work. And so it's going to be a little hard to see. Um, but you can see that these segments are roughly representing different land cover types. And one thing you might have to do is adjust those parameters we talked about a little bit to get this exactly right. Because you can see that these roads. appear to be in multiple segment types, right? So you got trees and roads in the same segment, and that's not ideal. Um, so you may want to play around with those settings a little bit, maybe make those segments a little smaller. But you can see that um, we do have, maybe over here we'll get something, that we kind of are picking up some of these different land cover types in the segments. Okay, so Especially right here, you can see this one really well represents kind of this stand of trees. Um, but that's what your segments are going to look like. And we're going to move on to uh, processing these a little more in the next video of the series. So thanks for watching, guys. And like I said, um, check the Open Source Options website. I will try to remember to post a link to that um, in the description so you can copy and paste the code and see the image outputs.